Welcome back, everyone. It's 11 o'clock. We're going to get started with our last session in the morning, uh, which is exporting and importing a copy, which is best. Uh, leading this session will be Raymond Singh from the Center for Teaching Excellence, and Sistine will be Martin Quinn from the LMS support team. Okay, let's see if this works. Hello. All right. People in Zoom, if y'all cannot hear me, let me know, please. Howdy, everyone, and good morning. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with exporting, importing, or copying, something that a lot of professors have questions about. So we're hoping today to resolve this issue of which one do I use and how to do it effectively. So when it comes to... When it comes to transferring course content, a lot of professors um, want to make sure that they're doing this correctly because especially if you're a returning professor, you don't want to create content from scratch, right? You want to pull it from a different course just to make it easier for you. However, um, there are two main types to do this and there are benefits and drawbacks for each. So you want to make sure you know the benefits of each one of these methods so that you're not losing information or content um, and you're really truly using the option that works best for you based on whatever it is that you want to um, transfer. So one thing to consider is what kind of things transfer with you. There's two main methods uh, when it comes to transferring content, and that is either exporting and importing um, or course copy. They both have distinct uh, features that you want to make sure you are aware of before you go ahead and get started with it. Um, this is kind of a cool table visual that um, goes over what are those distinct differences. Something that I do want to point out, this is kind of nice that it's laying out accessibility that carries over really quickly, which is really important. Sorry, but announcements carries over. Assignment groups with export import does not carry. So if you have an assignment group already done and created in a different course and you're about to move it, it's not going to carry over if you do course copy. So something to look at just to see if this is something you are comfortable with. Um, another thing that stands out is um, rubrics carries over. Um, let me see which one that does not carry over. So groups also tends to carry over regardless. With new quizzes, item banks, they only carry over if you're doing a course copy and you are copying everything. If you are to copy just certain items, then you won't have uh, the quiz item banks copied over. So what export and import is, um, typically if you're take, importing something from a different course, you have to export it first. You have to have an export package um, and you have to have access to that course. Let's say you are borrowing it from a colleague. That colleague has to have access to that course so that they can make an export package, send it to you, and then you can import it into your course. A course copy, you would also have to have access to that course and be able to copy it on your end. You don't have to um, have an export package for it. All right, so the other thing, the other thing that you want to consider when you are choosing between exporting or importing the content or course copy is the storage limit. Uh, Canvas tends to have a one gigabyte storage limit, and you want to make sure you're not going above that because then you cannot share files with your students. So the best way to consider whether you are going to do course copy or export or import is to realize these key differences. With export and import, when you are, this is a visual that shows you course number one would be your original course. Let's say I'm about to uh, export information from there and import it right into course number two. Now notice how you have a display capacity and you have the actually actual space used. Export and import tends to be very straightforward. Uh, when you do export your content from course number one to course number two, it displays accurately how much storage do you have left and how much storage do you, why did that switch? Sorry guys. And how much storage do you still have left? So um, I, I like that about export and importing is that it's really straightforward. It shows you that it's accurate so that you're not blindsided. In the moment your storage is full and all of a sudden 
you can't add anything and you're like, well, what happened? So it's more important accurately tells you that. Now with course copy, it's a little bit different because if you're in a sport, if you're copying stuff from course number one to course number two, realize that it, and then you take that to course number three, realize how your display capacity, it's not showing accurately. So, you know, over here, I'm taking from my course number one to my course number two. This one tells you that you only have zero, you have this much um, that you have filled, right? Same thing with, if you were to take that information to course number three, it tells you, oh, you still have a lot of space left until one gigabyte. But in reality, you've actually used up 1.1. And the reason why that happens is because with course copy, if you were to take information from the first course, it reside whatever information you're using, it still resides in that first original course of yours. So let's say there's an assignment in course number one that you are copying to course number two. Technically, the actual storage space, that course still resides in that first course. Um, and if you were to make edits, it's more likely so that it will edit into that original copy um, that, that you have. So just something to think about. There are drawbacks and benefits to both. Um, and this is, there was, I think, right here. So this is also something to look at, um, the table we looked at earlier. All right, so ways to copy. How do I copy my information? So to do that, you would go to your uh, settings in your course, which I will demo that in a second you have to, um, you go to import course content, then you choose to copy a Canvas course, and then you choose the course that you're about to copy information from. Select whether you wanna copy all the content in that course, or if you want to select specific content, and then you hit import. So I'm gonna show you that real quick, how that looks like. And I personally like to use this, um, let me go to that. Or, uh, something it's similar to I, I teach a course at Blinn and I don't like to start over every time I teach the semester so something I do is I just transfer everything I have from the previous course to the new course and I do little tweaks edits here and there but um, I just you know it's smarter than having to restart from scratch so in this case after you go to your settings and you I did let me go back just to make sure we're following through you do import course content you'd click that and then you select Canvas course, copy a Canvas course, because we're copying from a different course. You choose the course that you're going to copy information from. So let's say I'm going to go with this one. Do you want all your content or specific content? And then you hit import. Once you do that, it'll kind of generate here. There's like a bar that's telling you, all right, it's loading, it's pending, it's happening. And then you'll see a little maroon button on the very right side that says select course materials. Oh, they can't see this. I'm so sorry. Thank you for letting me know. Sorry, anytime I'm not sharing, please let me know. Let me share the correct screen. I think it's this. Is this the right answer? Yep. Okay, let me, let me start real quick. All right, we have time. We can do this. So import course content. So let me go back to the course real quick so y'all can see where I got this from. All right, so you go to your settings in your course navigation bar on the left. Then you go to import course content. Then you select copy a Canvas course. You select the course that you are going to take information from. And then either you choose all content or select specific content. And then you hit the import button. Once you do that, on this side right here, you'll have this loading bar. Um, and then it'll show up on the room button that says select course content. Choose that and make sure you're selecting the items that you would like to select. And then once you hit um, copy course, all that information will transfer right into your course. Make sure you are checking the storage so that you have um, you have an eye on that. Okay, let me stop the share and go back to our presentation. All right, so the second method that you can transfer information from is export import. So you first would want to have access to that course. You export that information in the style of an export package, typically a CSV file that you would save on your computer. And then you go to your course that you would like to import information from, extract or try to find that export file, and then import that right in. 
Either you have access to that course so that you can export the file, right, an old course that you were teaching, or a colleague of yours, maybe a former colleague that had taught this class before you, and they give you all the old files, uh, again, in the form of an export file. So let's look at that real quick together so we can see how to do that. All right, so same procedure, pretty much you go to the settings button or link on the course navigation bar. You would hit the export course content on the very right side. You can see this menu right here. And then you either choose you wanna export course or quiz. Um, so in this case, let's say I'm gonna go ahead and export the course, the whole course, which will take a while. And you hit the um, export button. You can see that it's gonna load. It's gonna take a while. We're not gonna wait for it to load because this is a pretty big course. But once that happens, it'll um, give you a CSV file, which you will go ahead and upload that or save that on your desktop. And then from there, we would do the import process. So let me go to that. You would go to the import course content, same thing, the same button basically that we use for the course copy. The only difference is once you click on import course content, the type that you're gonna choose is not copy the Canvas course. This time we're gonna go to Canvas course export, right? Because we are going to use, we're gonna go ahead and choose the export file that we just downloaded on our desktop. Once you click that and choose it, you are welcome to choose whether you want all the content to be exported from that package or if you want to select a specific content from there. And then you choose the import button. Again, it'll load, give you that bar that we just saw. And, and then once it's completed, it's completed. Very simple. Um, but this is the one that will show you. So this is uh, the option that will show you accurately the storage on Canvas. So pretty straightforward. Reem, I just want to jump in real quick. Yes. When you make that export package and you go to import it into that course, you won't even make it to that current jobs part. It will fail if it's over one gigabyte, kind of like what Reem was tell telling you earlier. So that's a key indicator. If you see it fail, it should give you um, something that says this course package is too large, some sort of message like that to let you know. Great point, Martin. Thank you so much. Yes. So I guess that will alert you, but it'll be like too late. So you'll have to configure other parts in your course to probably swap out. So that's why export import tends to be a little bit more straightforward because it does reflect the storage for you versus deceiving you like course copy. But anyway. um, we have a question over here. Yes. I inherited the course and when I look at the files, it's like accumulation of so many years. So what's the this course of action? Yes, so the question was looking at a course that was inherited has lots of files uh, that have been there for a numerous year. So all of my data point if you want to touch base, it's as well. Yeah, so CJ, um, what what the support can do for you is if you create an, if we, you send a ticket over to us and let us know I have an export package that's too large for my Canvas course, we can get with you in a Zoom session and we can import that into, we have a special course that we can put that's larger that we can put that package into. And we can look at it with you. It's going to be a little bit of like work, uh, might take a little bit of time. So you might want to set, set aside maybe an hour or so for us to look through the course and either get rid of some of that content or delete it. And then we can give it to you. Um, let's, say you need, let's say you need some of that content, but you don't need it immediately. We can give it to you in a, a Google file, Tamu Google file. So we can share that route with you. Then, uh, and if it's not over that one gigabyte limit, the best solution would be just to choose the items to import and import those. So, um, we don't mind going back there to that screen. So, where she where she had the option to import everything from the previous course, you want the actual yeah in Canvas please. The so if this screen where you have the option of all content or select specific content. You can choose a select specific content option and it will have you choose the import 
it will actually go at the bottom, and then you can select the items you want to bring in. I think you can change it. It has been plotted for me. Oh, so it's already in the course. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. If it's already in the course, then probably just going through the course and deleting the thing that you don't need uh, would be the best course of action. Like, you know, like are the duplicate and triple assignments, things like that, and resources? Then yes, unfortunately, the best way is going to be to either go through the course and and, and remove the one that you don't need anymore just to clear that space. Yeah, and if you want us to look at that with you to kind of help you along the way, just send a ticket into us and we can set up a Zoom session and, and look at different options for you. Thank you. All right, any other questions on export, import, or course copy? All right, we can go ahead and move on. So, Winnie. Something to keep in mind when you are course copying or exporting and importing information from a different course, uh, things are not gonna look the same. They're not gonna be uh, the very same because you're moving it from one place to another, to a new home. And so typically uh, some links could actually get broken when you are moving courses or course material from one course to another. Uh, some accessibility issues would probably not transfer uh, smoothly as you would want it to. So something to check when you are exporting, importing, or course copying is to double check these things. So the first thing, check the link validator, which is in your course, and we can look at that in a second, uh, to make sure that there's no broken links, right? Because you're moving it from one place to another, there that could be a potential uh, issue that could arise. So we look at that and that's easily an easy fix once the link validator runs its report. And then the accessibility is something you'd also want to check. Um, and typically accessibility, the problems that you would have there would be with the images. They don't transfer smoothly. So you want to make sure you're looking at each image, marking it as a decorative image, given all text. Uh, you know, for some of our students, they use screen readers and uh, the pictures won't, I guess the screen reader won't recognize the picture if you don't put an alt text. And so when you are transferring it to a different course, double check those so that your students who are using screen readers can still get the information from the picture as they would have from the original course. So um, there is a link there to know how to do that step-by-step, -step, how to run a link validator, as well as the accessibility report. I'm just gonna show you real quick how to find that from the course. So you would go to your course and you'd go to your, I'm just gonna go to my dashboard real quick. And then accessibility report is at your is on your course navigation on the very left side, you click that. And then there should be a run report. So right here, you can see that, um, I guess 95% of this course is pretty good. I mean, I still wanna double check that 5% though. And it, the, the great thing about this is it tells you uh, where is the issue, what pictures have an issue, and then you can click on every individual picture. Um, and then it'll tell you that, hey, there's no description for this picture, this background, for example. Um, a good method of practice is when you know that there's a picture that has an issue, go to that picture in your course and do the edits in that in the location of where that picture resides versus doing it from here. So that way, if you ever transfer that information to a different course, all that information carries over. If you do it through um, Ally right here, this the edits could not wouldn't uh, potentially move to the different course. So an example would be if you go to your home screen and let's say this picture, or I'm gonna go with this picture. I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit. Let's say the university resources picture is broken or that it's not accessible. So you make sure that you will click on image options. And then from here, uh, you would fix the deck, like the uh, accessibility. So I would hit decorative image. Um, and then you can see that there's an alt text. So that's good because it's telling me what that is. And then you hit done and it should be accessible for students. So fixing it where it resides exactly so you don't have this issue arise in the future. What was the other thing we're gonna look at? Yeah, that's... Great. And... 
Another thing or some transfer considerations. When you do that, uh, like we said, some external tools may need links update because links typically get broken when they move from one place to another. Another thing is copying and pasting links of files from one course to another will break the links. We said that um, exports do not include student interactions or grades. That's the great thing, right? We don't want student interactions or grades moving to the other course. So the good thing is that that does not move forward because we want a clean slate for our new students. Um, the next thing is export quizzes linked to question banks will not bring the bank. If you do want to bring the bank to the different course, you'd have to, why does it do that? You'd have to um, export those banks individually uh, or separately. So do make sure if you want all the whole bank, just either export that separately or you export uh, or course copy the entire course and therefore your bank will uh, move to the next course. Importing a new course twice will overwrite the original. Also another thing to think about. Right, section two. Sorry, Reem, on uh, back to the link validator. Yes. Would you mind demoing that one, please? So sorry for missing that one. Okay. All right, so if I remember correctly, it's from the settings. Right? Am I doing this right, CJ? Yeah. Uh, right side of the screen. The right. Well, yeah. Yes. How did I miss that? There you go. Validate links in content. Um, and then you just go ahead and so I already did this in my course, but um, if you uploaded new links, just hit that button and it will um, run a report through all your links and it will tell you if there's any links that are broken and that you need to fix that exactly like the accessibility report. It's really good about telling you the exact issues and where to find those. This will take a while, so we're gonna move forward. All right, so this is the easy, really easy, easy process uh, when you want to transfer individual items within a module and you want to either send that to someone, you want to copy it to a different place, or you want to just share it with the world, basically. So this is really simple. It's a click of a button um, in your Canvas course. So there's three options that you can send your information through. One, you can either send to, we'll look at that and demo that in a second. And that is typically an option you would use when you want to send it to a person within the institution, obviously, from Texas A&M, who uses Canvas. Um, if you want to copy something to a different course that you have, you would use the copy the copy to option. Uh, I have two courses and I want to move it from course number one to course number two. The other option that we have is the uh, commons and commons includes both A and M professors. I want to give this information to all A and M professors so that they have access to it or to just the general public of anybody, any university institution that uses campus. So real quick, I'm going to look at all those options. Actually, let me do this. Let me go over the slides and then I'll demo every single one of them um, as we go. So the send to, you go to your module that you would like to send or the individual item. And then you click this three dots right here where it gives you options to do things. And this is where you would send to, find the email of that person that you would like to send the information to, type their name. I use my colleague, Sam Carlos here, and then you would hit send. This slideshow is nice that it has a little video to demo that step-by-step, -step, should you forget how uh, this looks like. And that just did not do well. Okay. The next thing is the copy, pretty much the same process. You go to that individual item in your module, click that three dots, and instead of choosing send to, you will hit, click the copy to button or uh, option, and then choose the course that you would like to copy this information to, click the copy button, and that should copy the information. I'm gonna try to exit out of here so the video doesn't play. No. How to uh, to the comments, same thing, same uh, method, but this time you're clicking the share, share to comments, and then there's a little bit of settings to this one since you're sharing it to the general uh, commons bank for Canvas. So let me go to the actual course so we can see how that looks like individually. So I'm going to go to my modules. 
And let's say I want to transfer week one information to, I want to send it to a colleague or um, basically a colleague. So you'd hit send to just from those three dots. And then you type in the email of that person. And once the email appears, you would choose the send button. Uh, as far as copying goes, same thing, same procedure. You click the copy to, and then you choose the course that you want it to move to, and you hit copy. And then the last thing is the share the comments. This one is a little bit more complex, so it's going to take us to a different page because the Commons is more related to Canvas than it is to AM. Um, the other ones were straightforward because you're sending everything through AM uh, to AM personnel or to an AM course. This one is taken to a Canvas, um, to the Canvas thing. Now, let me see why this is not uploading. Let's try this again. Give it a second, maybe. I don't know why it's not uploading. It could be that. It's fine. Um, regardless of, I guess, how that looks like, it's very straightforward. We can look at the slideshow um, picture. It's going to tell you where you want to share it, the name, give it a name. Um, who do you want to share it with? Um, it, it, it You kind of give it an interface so that when people do search under the comments, and actually let me show you how the comments look like. If that's not loading, I can show you how the comments look like. So the comments is in your global navigation button because it's a like more Canvas thing. And yeah, the comments is really not working with us today. But yeah, the way it looks like it'll have a lot of courses displayed there from anybody who uses Canvas. And you can actually, I think it's really awesome because you can uh, transfer the whole courses from other campuses, other universities, uh, based on your preference and just have that for you, especially if they're teaching the same course. It's nice to see what other people, you know, do or what kind of engaging activities they have and move that forward. Yeah, so it's unfortunate that it's not working with us today, but it's a nice option to explore. Yes, we have a question. Yes, no question. So when dealing with comments, like how do you digital guides actually work? Like who owns the course? Like do you get that approval before you actually post the comments? Like when you use somebody else's course, like how does it work? From my understanding, I don't think you have to have approval to post to comments and all the information on there is free to use. Without yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a great question. I don't know that I have the answer to that. Um, I actually may let Justin chime in here in a, in a moment. The, the courses that are available to be seen are, you know, that, that's obviously how someone else has shared, but I would assume the sharing of the individual course at AM and for public uh, would be governed by some broader department or uh, organizational structure. I don't know if this can chime in with that. I know, I know there are a lot of faculty who share courses between each other on the commons, or will share sort of visible to the department. I don't know of any publicly visible courses, though. I mean, if you're just sharing to the department, then that would be governed obviously by the department policy. But outside of that, I mean, I don't, I'm not seeing any publicly shared courses. I don't, I don't even know if we answer that, to be honest. If, if, it were, if it were something you want to do, I would suggest start with the part, how, how the department's governed and then go from there. Great question. Okay, I think this brings us to the end of our presentation on exporting and importing content as well as course copying. Um, so this is, this would be a good time for you to explore those options um, to see which works best for you based on your preference, based on storage space, or the content that you're trying to transfer. Uh, I'd like you all to just take a few minutes to look at both options and how it's done, if it's something that interests you as far as moving content back and forth. And if you have questions, please let us know.